Hey Brats, today we are here to talk about the top five accessories that are gonna help increase your immersion in VR and make for the best possible experience. Number five, controller grips. Of all the VR controllers I've tried, I have never found one that I have absolutely just loved the minute I put it on besides the Oculus Rift CD1 controller. Maybe I don't like the feeling of plastic on my hand or there's usually just some other factor that causes me to not be in love with the controller the first time I hold it. So for instance, the Oculus Rift Touch controllers for the new Rift S controller, I couldn't stand a couple things about them. One, the battery compartment likes to come off when you're really playing hard. Two, letting go of the grip button to drop an item but still having to hold the controller with your other fingers never felt natural to me. I got these set of AMVR knuckle style grips to where if you want to throw something in a game, you can just let go. That is huge for immersion. It is so much more realistic and I am so much more accurate when I can just let go of the controller when I try to throw something instead of trying to be like, ugh, with just my middle finger. The only controller that I've never tried is the Knuckles controller for the Valve Index, or you can also use it, of course, with the Vive. From what I've read on that one, some people say it just doesn't feel substantial, it feels too small. So there is a couple solutions, I'll show you one on the screen. Some people on Etsy have made additional 3D printed parts that you can hook to the controller that make it feel more substantial. Number four, VR stand. I absolutely love VR stands for a couple of reasons. One, if you've got a VR headset that needs the controllers to be charged, you can have your controllers in the charging stand all the time, ready to go. You take them out, you never have to worry about, did I charge them, are my batteries ready? Fantastic. Of course, for Oculus, you don't have this option yet because there is, there's just batteries you have to swap out. And I've gone rounds with that and how much I hate it, so I'm not going to talk about all that here. But anyways, there's some amazing VR display stands out there. The Asterian Aura is a gorgeous one. It looks awesome. There's a magnetic charging stand for the Oculus Quest. That way you can just drop your Quest in. It stays charged all the time, ready to go. You put it on, it's ready to go. You put it back, it charges it back up for you. You never have to think about, did I charge up my Quest? A VR charging stand, have your headset ready for you so you're not questioning, do I need to charge up my controllers? You can have your headset charged up if it's one that needs to and can help prevent you from losing that immersion by, oh no, batteries are out. Now I need to go recharge my controllers and not get back to it. Number three, cable management. Now we've talked about cable management on the channel before, but there is nothing to me more immersion breaking than having a cable running all over your back and bumping into you, especially for those of us who wanna play Beat Saber and it gets hot and you don't wanna have all of your clothing on the whole time you're playing. If you take your shirt off and that thing is bouncing all across your skin, it is really obnoxious. I highly recommend a cable management system from Kiwi. Now I've only tried their original. I'm actually waiting on a second edition of theirs because the new edition is supposed to be even quieter and have less tug on the cable. So when you move your head, you don't feel it tugging on the wire so much. I love my Kiwi system. I have one everywhere I have a VR headset and it keeps the cables off you. You can turn without having to worry about the cable tangling up around your throat and choking you or tangling up or stepping on it with your feet. Especially for those of you out there who have ever stepped on a VR cable and then tried to move and potentially pulled on the cable or even many of them have been broken that way. A VR cable management system keeps you immersed in the game and makes a huge difference. Number two, headphones. Now, when it comes to headphones for VR, personal preference is gonna have to come first for absolutely everyone out there. I can recommend a set or another set, but you have to, if you can, try sets and find the one that's best for you. Personally, I absolutely love the Sony Pulse Elite headphones for any VR headset you have because it has that unique feature, has the rumble packs in it, so that you get more of the, in the game, you get vibrations. If you have a gunshot or an explosion, you feel it more. I do wanna make a disclaimer, I do not recommend these for VR noobs. These, having that rumble right on your ear can add to people who get motion sick. So that's something to consider. So for you, what's most important is gonna be, it's gotta have good audio. High quality audio is gonna make or break your VR experience. And you won't even know it if you're using lower quality headphones a lot of times until you switch up and all of a sudden you see, wow, I really am feeling and hearing these games way more than I was before. Some people love noise canceling headphones. Personally, I can't stand them. I like noise isolating headphones. So isolating means it tries to isolate out the noise out through like an earmuff style or through filling your ear canals and earbuds and tries to block the sound that way. Noise canceling headphones use other sound waves that go into your ears to try and block out existing sound from the outside. The problem to me with those is it makes kind of this sound in my ear that kind of sounds like when you have, you're in an airplane and it's taking off and the pressure is changing. It's kind of like a constant pressure on my ears. So I don't love noise canceling headphones, but if you do, I've heard they can be great for VR. And then of course there's sets like Mantis Bionic headphones that were made specifically for PSVR, but will even work for like a Rift S that are just on there all the time, ready to go. So that when you put your headset on, you don't have to think about something extra. That's where convenience may override what you want 
want as far as audio quality. Whatever you get, having good, high quality, big drivers in it, it's gonna have crisp, clear audio is gonna make a huge difference as far as immersion in VR goes. Number one, haptic feedback. There's a lot of different type of haptics in production right now, although there's very few that have actually made it to market that you can get for your VR headset. The ones that I have gotten to try personally, I've tried the Wooger strap and the sub pack. These are both based only on audio cues. These are not true built-in haptics. A true built-in haptic vest is something that developers have to program in. That way, if you're wearing a vest and you get shot in the side, they would program that you actually feel that shot in your side, not a horrible pain, but like a sensation that makes you aware what part of your body that's coming from. I've never gotten to try out those kinds of haptics and I think they're a logical next step for VR, but you're talking a niche market inside of a niche market and it's going to be hard to market something like that right now to the current VR world. But as far as using a sub pack or a Wooger strap goes, anytime there's a loud sound, all of a sudden you feel that sound pumping into your body. It's like having a really powerful subwoofer under your chair and there's a rumble every time something happens. This makes for an amazing step in immersion in VR. It can take a game like Resident Evil 7, a game that I thought was really cool, but the problem was every time someone attacked me in the game, it reminded me, oh yeah, this isn't real. When the girl pushed me across the room, I didn't feel anything. You know, my character may have gone flying, but I was still just standing there holding my controller. It didn't do anything. When you have the sub pack on, all of a sudden they hit you, you crash in the wall and you feel your body rumbling and shaking. And it almost adds this sense of terror that changes the experience. And all of a sudden kind of tells your body, it's possible you could get hurt in here. You can't and you're still totally safe, but it completely changes the immersion. If you have any chance to try haptics, I absolutely recommend give it a shot. For haptics on PC, there is all kinds of different options that are coming out. Wooger's made a tactical vest. Now it's like $800 and different vests have different levels of support to try. So you can take a look at those. I'll leave some links in the description to different ones and see if something is right for you. I one day really hope to go try one of the actual official vests that's programmed into a game so that everything is happening. You feel it properly. I think that down the road, we'll see haptics becoming more of a commonplace thing with VR. But for now, like I said, it's a niche inside of a niche inside of a niche and so on and so forth. But absolutely haptics are amazing if you get a chance to check them out. These are my top five VR accessories. I'd love to hear what you think. If there's something out there that's changed the game for immersion for you, let me know in the comments section. Let's have a discussion about it. I want to say thank you so much to all of you for hanging out with me today. I will see you in another reality.